Hello, and welcome back to Galactic Goddess TV. I'm your host, Rada Nelia. And today we're going to dive in with astro updates with our in house expert, Yvonne Irene. And each month, Yvonne is bringing her invaluable galactic guidance, blending her mastery with astrology and her profound healing insights. Yvonne has a background in counseling and psychotherapy, and she's also an acclaimed author whose work is featured in Stories of the Goddess, Divine Feminine Frequency Keepers. And today we're going to jump into September Astro Updates. Welcome, Yvonne. Hi, Rada. I'm so excited to be here and dive into the energy of September with you. I feel like there's a lot of really exciting transits coming in, especially for like our friends who are Pisces with that eclipse like that's gonna be so exciting I can't wait to dive into everything with you oh my goodness this is gonna be a big juicy month so where should we start I believe we have a new moon in Virgo today yes yes we do so I'm very excited about this new moon because this is a big one for us and the reason is that this is the final new moon before the eclipse season starts. So this is a really beautiful time for folks to set intentions. If there's a goal that you want to put out there or work towards, this is a beautiful time to do so, especially because Virgo is connected to organization. It's connected to routines, to our day to day. So anything related to work, great time to set intentions and goals around that theme and also health because Virgo is connected to wellness, to our health as well. So if there's any goals that you have that you want to set towards your health or wellness, this is also a great time. I see with your water, that's such a good (laughs) one to have more water. That's so important for us. It it really is. I was just saying that I'm a, I love coffee and I feel like my body's made out of coffee, but I need to drink a little bit more water. So that's my, that's my health goal. Um, but so we're going to also have Mars entering cancer September 4th. And we know that's kind of like a dichotomy, you know, it's like two different things. So do you want to just share what that means for the collective? Yeah, absolutely. So the energy of Mars is very much the energy that is determined. It's motivated. It's fiery. Mars wants to take action. And it's quite a contrast compared to the energy of cancer because cancer is a water sign and cancer is a little slow to warm up. It kind of hides inside its shell and it waits a little bit before it starts to come out and feel comfortable to explore. And that's kind of like the dichotomy between this energy. It's like you have a forest fire and you dump water on the fire. Obviously the fire is going to get tamed. It's going to eventually get put out. And that's kind of the energy that happens when Mars is in a water sign. It can feel like it's a little more difficult for us to take action. And it takes a lot more for us to get motivated. So this is a great time to work with cancer themes because that can really help get more motivation in place. So if it comes to things related to our home, our family, our roots. These are great things that we can take action in. Also around the people that we we love, the people in our family, our relationships. I notice sometimes when people have this placement in particular, Mars and Cancer, they're the ones where if someone is doing wrong to those that they love and care for, that's when they come out and they're ready to take action. And you really do see that Martian energy come out. I like that. I could use more of those people in my life. (laughs) That's me. (laughs) I love, I love that. I mean, there's a certain level of integrity there, you know, looking out for people you love and, and um, being sometimes a voice. Um, So, you know, what's next? Cause I know this is action packed September 8th, Mercury enters Virgo. What does that even mean for the collective? So this is an exciting one because Mercury feels so comfortable and so good in the sign of Virgo. Virgo is actually ruled by Mercury as well. So when that energy goes into Virgo, our minds feel more sharp. We feel like we're ready to dive into the small details. We're ready to get organized, get things in place as well. 
So this is a really great time for us to be having practical communication with folks, being really organized as well. And one thing too, with this energy of Virgo is this is a great time for us to use our voice to be of service because Virgo is connected to service and Mercury is all about communication. So it's a beautiful time for anyone who maybe has been feeling like, I really care for this cause. I really want to speak up on this. This is the time to do so and really put that attention out there and help and support others. Oh, that's so sweet. I love the organization part because I'm actually going through so many boxes right now and just organizing. So this, I'm like, yay, I have energy supporting me. <laughs> yes, that is so aligned with that energy of both Virgo season and Mercury and Virgo because it's all about getting things organized. It's all about getting things ready and in place to make things easier for you, especially when it comes to day to day, to work and things that we're dealing with on a regular basis. Incredible. And so the most exciting thing about this month, maybe not, but um, is that we're having a lunar eclipse and it's on a full moon. Is that correct? Yes. That's the one that I'm most excited about too. We're having a full moon lunar eclipse in the sign of Pisces on September 17th. And basically what eclipses are is it's either a supercharged new moon or a supercharged full moon. So this one being a full moon means that we're going to be releasing a lot of the themes that are connected to Pisces that are more about the shadows. Mm -hmm. So with Pisces energy, the shadows connected there are it can feel like it's boundaryless, yeah. And sometimes it makes it hard to figure out where exactly is the line. So we're being asked to put in boundaries to get really clear on what it is that we want to, you know, express and put out there to folks and say like, hey, you just crossed my boundary instead of just allowing yourself to kind of be either like a doormat or not even realize your boundary has been crossed. Cause I do see that happen a lot too, with some folks who have a lot of prominent Pisces energy. Sometimes they can be, you know, in their own fantasy world, they could have their rose colored glasses on and they don't even realize like, Oh, that person just violated my boundary. So this is a great time for them to be using their voice to stick up for themselves. Triple Pisces here. <laughs> Yes, this is going to be a really powerful one for you with the triple Pisces energy. And as well, too, you know, the energy of Pisces, another shadow that's connected to it is sometimes for Pisces, it can feel like it's so hard to, to be in the world because they're so compassionate, so empathetic. They really soak everything up and it can be hard to be, you know, living and being a human in this day and age for them that they can turn to escapism. And that can be done through many different ways. One that I've seen that has come and risen so much is binge watching with streaming networks and also, you know, the doom scroll when we're spending all of our time on either TikTok or Instagram on social platforms. So this is also a great time where if we find ourselves turning to these forms of escapism or even other things like over exercising, um, seeking comfort through food. So escaping through food, uh, whatever it is that we're using, substance, this is a great time. Abuse. I feel like substance abuse has really risen in the past yeah. years. And I, I think that had to do with Saturn. Uh, some, somehow I, you can tell me that Saturn entered something, you know, something, and it really has been like making people, um, get more substance abuse, I think. Yeah. So actually that is one of the ways ways that we can escape with the energy of Pisces. So a lot of times when we talk about escapism, it can be through like drugs and alcohol or substances as well. And that's something that we are kind of dealing with, especially as we're in the Saturn and Pisces era. So we're really being yeah, asked that's to look at Saturn and Pisces because it happened yeah. at the beginning of the year or last year. It happened last year. Last year was when that energy came into play and we've been really feeling it and dealing with that energy because we're asked, you know, what is it that we're using to escape, whether it is drugs or alcohol or substances, or 
if it's through other means that may seem very, um, not like as extreme, like for example, like when I say like binge watching or, you know, eating to, to escape, those mm -hmm. seem more harmless in that sense, but there's still escape techniques and methods that we can use. So this is a really great time to get honest with ourselves. And if we see that we are reaching for one of these coping mechanisms to help us escape our everyday life, it's a great time to really get real and look at it and see and assess what can we do to start letting that go. Mm, that's so beautiful. Great invitation, you guys. I think it's nice to know about these updates because then we can kind of work with the cycles and start, you know, each month we want to share this so that you have tools in your toolbox to maybe journal and think about the themes that Yvonne is speaking on so that, you know, we can start to really use these to catapult and uplevel ourselves. And um, it's a beautiful gift. So thank you so much, Yvonne. Yes. Um, I agree. I think it's so beautiful to work with the cycles and reflect. And that's why it's so beautiful to get to have opportunities like this to share this information with folks, because it's not something that everybody knows or can figure out, you know, oh, this transit is happening. This is happening. You know, it can be hard if you don't understand these cycles. So I'm really grateful to be here and share that. Thank you. I'm so excited. This is really fun learning, you know? So, um, and then we're moving into Libra season and I think that's going to be a big shift for everybody, right? Yes, absolutely. So we're shifting into Libra season on September 22nd. And right now we're currently in Virgo season. So Virgo season, again, you know, it's all about service. It's about wellness. It's about health. It's about organization, the small details, getting our life together. And we're transitioning into the sign of Libra. And Libra is all about relations. It's very relational. So this could be not just romantic relationships, but like platonic relationships, familial relationships, business relationships, any really close one-to-one -one relationships that we have with folks can really be highlighted during this period. We might feel like we're wanting to be more social, wanting to connect with people because that's what air signs are. They're very social. They love connecting, love communicating, love expressing themselves with other folks. And the energy of Libra also invites us to spend time with folks that we really care about. If there's someone maybe you haven't seen in a while, you may feel like, oh, I really want to connect with them during Libra season because it's all about connection, it's about cooperation, it's about collaboration. And as well, Libra is connected to Venus and Venus is connected to beauty. So this is such a beautiful time to engage in Venusian activities, like going to museums, going to art shows, really engaging in culture and art. There's like a concert or music you've been really feeling called to listen to or even play an instrument. Whatever you can do to really dive into those creative subjects, that's also something that's very beautiful to do during Libra season. Oh, I'm really looking forward to that. I feel like it's a softer time for us, you know, after all these, oh, well, the Mercury retrograde, and we still have more retrogrades that we're in, but it just feels like an energy transition, basically. Yeah. So. And especially because Libra is connected to Venus and Venus is a very positive, beautiful energy to be working with. So it's really nice when we have the sun in the sign of Libra, because we're really working with that beautiful Venus energy and it can feel much more soft for sure. Oh, so what does it mean when Venus enters Scorpio, which is September 26? Yes. So Venus enters the sign of Scorpio and Venus is all about our love, our relationships. It's also connected again to beauty and it's also connected to even money as well. And when it goes into the sign of Scorpio, we notice that we might feel like we kind of want to investigate, dive in deeper, whether it comes to feeling out, you know, the people in our lives, our relationships. We may also want to go really deep with people mm. because this is a time to, to go very in depth with those we are friends with or in relationship with as well. One of the shadows connected to 
Venus in Scorpio is that we may also find ourselves becoming a little more obsessive because sometimes with the Scorpio energy, we can find ourselves being a little more obsessive. So if there's someone you're interested in and you notice like, oh, I'm getting like very obsessive, um, that's just something to reflect on and think about. Is this because the Venus energy is in the sign of Scorpio or is this a quality that I really do have because we also want to be mindful when we're in relationships that we're not being so obsessive with folks and another shadow with the Scorpio energy is power so sometimes this is something to be mindful of when we're in relationship that we're not in relationship with folks who feel like they are taking away our personal power we mm -hmm. want to be in relationship with folks who feel like they are helping us step up into our power and uplifting us. So that's just something to be mindful of and look out for, especially if we're either noticing this in our own relationships during this time, or we see ourselves behaving this way in our relationships too. Mm, really good. Really good to know you guys. So your crush out there, you know, kind of just keep it cool. <laughs> um, and then lastly, we have Mercury entering Libra and that's that's also the 26. Wow, what does that mean? Yeah, so Mercury is going to enter the sign of Libra on September 26 and Mercury is all about our communication and it's about our learning. So when it goes into the sign of Libra, if there's anything that you've been wanting to learn when it comes to how to communicate with folks, especially in a way that allows both of you to be seen, to be heard, because Libra is all about cooperation. It's about reciprocity. And this is also a great time to engage in, again, the arts and also communicating with those who you love. This is a great time to have expressive communication with those folks. If there's someone who you really want to express how you feel to them, this is a beautiful time to do so. And also just spend time with loved ones, being social. It's a really beautiful opportunity to do so. And as well, if there's anything that you do to help express yourself that evolves, you know, with beauty. So again, it could be like painting, music, like this is a great time to communicate and express yourself through the arts and really shine with your creativity. Wow. Such an exciting time, you guys. And um, what it, what would you like to leave our audience with, you know, for a final thought for September, what to come in with and how to, you know, expect these energies? Yeah, so with September, you know, this is a really beautiful energy for us to really be getting into our goals, figuring out what it is that drives us and what, we want it, the steps we want to take for our intentions as well, especially with this new moon in Virgo. We really want to be mindful of the intentions that we're setting, the steps and action that we take towards it, especially with that Mars and Cancer energy, because we're going to need a little bit more help, a little more support, a little bit of that push to make things happen. So I think it's really beautiful to write down your goal write down some small, you know, little steps that you can take towards it and keep that in, in mind to help push you through as we work with this energy and bring these things forward, especially with the eclipses coming up because eclipses bring faded, you know, moments, energies, changes to happen in our lives. So as well, don't be scared of the eclipses remember to to roll with that energy and that things will continue to unfold for the next six months after the eclipse so as well have that patience if things are not you know releasing for example with this pisces full moon eclipse the way that you want it to happen know that it takes time and continue to build towards that have the patience oh beautiful Thank you so much for coming on today, Yvonne, and giving us all these astro insights. I know we're going to come back together and go a little bit deeper, you know, on the specific um, astro updates. So um, thank you all for tuning in today. We're sending you so much love and have a wonderful September. <laughs>